price volatility is that although it's always existed in agricultural markets, uh, this phase of price volatility that we've been facing since 2007-2008 food crisis is really something new. We are seeing uh, the global food system uh, showing its flaws in a very obvious and evident way. Food has become a commodity and I think this is very much at the heart of the problem that we're facing now. Um, of course, there are other issues like the, the demand for grains that has been created by the biofuels market, for example, agrofuels. Um, there's other issues like climate change. Um, the situation at the national level is also very complex, but the fact that uh, these, the, this volatility in international markets has caused such a crisis at the national level um, is also a symptom of the fact that during these past 30 years, countries have been told that they should um, forget about their own food sovereignty, they should just rely on importing food, they should just export cash crops for, for global markets. And that's why they're so vulnerable now, because they've just become importers of food. At the national level, we think, um, especially in, in countries of the South, uh, we think that we need agricultural policies, national agricultural policies that defend a food sovereignty agenda and that are um, decided and uh, designed with the participation of social organizations, farmers, consumers. Um, this is, it sounds like an obvious uh, thing to say, but in fact it, it, it rarely exists in many countries because we've been told that we don't really need price policies, for example. We don't really need national stocks of food because trade will, will solve everything. So we need to take back um, control of our national policies. We need to set the agenda at the national level. Um, at the international level, what we need is to recognize, first of all, recognize that the trade system has not been able to regulate um, uh, food, food needs and agricultural policies. And therefore, um, trade should be regulated. And we wonder, we question whether a trade organization such as the WTO, whose mandate is the further liberalization of trade, is really the best place um, to be asking these questions. We think that food security should be at the center of trade policies, agricultural trade policies. And therefore, the, the WTO wouldn't be the best place to have those kinds of discussions, we think that the Committee on Food Security is a much better place to start a, a debate on what kind of trade policies we need and to start to question the impact that trade policies have had on food security and the right to food. So this is what we, we're asking governments to do, to, 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 to claim the space of negotiation on trade policies in a multilateral and democratic setting such as the CFS. I'm an organic farmer. We grow many different kinds of grains. Right now our entire farm is certified organic. Uh, we have about 1,400 acres, which on a global scale is very large, but in the context of Saskatchewan it's actually quite small. Um, it's just my dad and I that do the field work. Uh, my mom does most of the vegetables and the chickens. And we pretty much supply our family, of our extended family of 15, with most of the food that we eat. 
we've really seen a huge decrease in public investment in agriculture. Um, it's almost as if the governments have just handed over the reins to the multinationals. They'll say, you guys have so much money, you guys can invest this in, in agriculture, and it's doing this great service to the farmers. But what they don't realize is that multinationals aren't investing in, in farmers. They're investing in their, in their businesses to pay profits to their shareholders, and that's the principle of their business. So you know, what we've seen is an incredible um, increase in the, the, uh, the amount of chemicals and fertilizers that are promoted and used um, as this solution to production, as this production model. At the same time, the public investment in agriculture on a local level is, is, almost, is almost gone. Um, there's essentially no infrastructure being in increased or improved on a local level for farmers to uh, access. So increasing the dependency on the international markets and, and these multinationals for their expertise. So really it's been a um, combination of a degradation of the social structure of rural communities and as well as a real um, financial stress on most farmers, as well as an, an increase in, a substantial increase in the amount of, um, of chemicals being used every day on the, on the land. In the case of agriculture policy on a national level, it really means going into rural communities, uh, and which is difficult because they're remote. In Canada, a lot of the rural communities are quite far from any cities, and this, you know, they don't, uh, rural voters don't really have any voting power right now. I'm not a politician, and I'm not an academic, I'm a farmer. So, I think the, the fact that the CFS has created a space to accept that, that there's a group of us here who uh, would never, you know, before this year or before the last, the, the reform of the CFS would have been outside in the streets, never would have known what was happening. So it's really important for us to see how the, the policy is developed to see the the challenges that governments face from a from a more from a closer point of view and it's also extremely important for them to hear our stories and to see that we're the people that are being affected by the decisions that are being made mm -hmm.